Have you ever heard that charging your phone overnight kills the battery, or that you should always keep it charged to a 100%? There's no shortage of advice on how to maintain the health of your battery. But which ones are actually helpful, and which ones are simply false? Today, I am busting seven common battery-related myths to set the record straight. Myth number one, charge your phone anywhere. Heat is the enemy of your battery. And unfortunately, charging and discharging the battery generates heat as a normal byproduct. This heat induces chemical aging of the battery material, which is typically lithium ion. And over time, the ability of the battery to efficiently perform the charge-discharge function reduces due to chemical aging. The main problem here is not the generation of the heat, but rather the trapping of the excess heat, which can expedite the chemical aging process. Charging in a hot or poorly ventilated area like under your pillow or in a hot car can speed up the battery aging process. To avoid this, charge your phone in a cool, well-ventilated spot and consider removing thick cases during charging. By doing this, you'll be doing your battery a solid favor and prolong its useful life. Myth number two, using a non-Apple charger and cable will damage your phone's battery. Apple no longer includes a charger with their phones, which means having to either buy expensive chargers from Apple or cheaper third-party alternatives. Naturally, most of us would choose the third-party alternative, and because of that, it's important to know the charging requirements of your phone. For example, my iPhone 14 Pro Max needs a minimum 20 watts of power supply for fast charging. And the third-party charger that I use can provide up to 65 watts. It also meets safety certifications, which means that it can regulate the power supply appropriately to match my phone's needs. Not getting this right can be detrimental to your device's battery chemistry and reduce its lifespan. The impact could range from your iPhone simply not charging, or worse, the charger will try to send more power than it's designed for and overheat. That's when you get smoking chargers, burnt out cables, and a fire hazard. So to summarize, whichever third-party charger and cable you end up using, check the safety certifications and the power ratings for both items and ensure that it either meets or exceeds the needs of your device. Myth number three, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi drains battery faster. The basis for this claim stems from the assertion that when Bluetooth is enabled, your phone is constantly searching for compatible devices to connect to. And if a weak connection is established with a trusted device, more battery charge will be expended trying to maintain that connection. The problem with this logic is that Bluetooth was in fact designed from the start to minimize battery usage. So leaving Bluetooth on has minimal impact on battery life. With that said, if you're in a battery pinch, turning off unused features like Bluetooth can help. And when it comes to Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi connection uses less power than a cellular network. Even Apple recommends always connecting to a Wi-Fi network when possible. So in conclusion, keep Bluetooth on and connect to a Wi-Fi network whenever possible. Myth number four. Partial charging is bad. This myth states that if batteries are only partially charged on a repeated basis, they lose usable capacity. This is known as the memory effect. For example, if you happen to always keep your phone charged at 70% and then suddenly charge up to 100%, your phone will lose charge more quickly from 100% to 70%. The problem with this myth is that lithium ion batteries, which is what Apple uses, are considered to have no memory effect. This myth is actually confused with battery health, which is a numerical figure that Apple tracks. You can find it by going to settings, battery, and then battery health and charging. Next to maximum capacity is a percentage figure that represents the battery capacity relative to when it was new. A lower capacity results in fewer hours of use between charges. For example, after two years of use, my battery is at 92%, which is actually quite good. The rule of thumb is that at 80% or around that mark, peak performance capability is greatly impaired. The only solution at that point is to get a new phone or replace the battery. So to summarize, 
it's totally safe to top up your charge on your phone whenever it's convenient. Just try not to let it drain down to zero regularly. Myth number five, fast charging and overnight charging is bad. These two falsehoods have been alive for a while, and maybe for good reason. You see, these two claims may have been true with earlier battery chemistries, but not so much with lithium ion batteries. For example, with a 20 watt charger, my iPhone 14 Pro Max can fast charge from zero to 50% in about 30 minutes. And Apple is actually on the conservative side of fast charging. For comparison, the OnePlus 13 can go from zero to 100 in just 36 minutes with a compatible charger, which is almost twice as fast. Apple says that their batteries operate at their best when charged between 20 and 80%. And iOS has a feature called optimized battery charging, which keeps the battery levels within this range. You can find it by going to settings, battery, and then battery health and charging. By enabling this option, your iPhone learns from your daily charging behavior and waits to finish charging past 80% until you need it. So go ahead and fast charge your iPhone if you have the appropriate charger. And also feel free to plug it in for overnight charging. Your iPhone is smart enough to hold the charge at 80% and then trickle up to 100% just before you need it. There is no risk of overcharging. Myth number six, always charge to 100%. According to Apple, charging to 100% isn't necessary and can actually even accelerate the wear and tear of your battery. In fact, their batteries are designed to last 500 full charge cycles or 1000 charge cycles for newer models before dropping to 80% capacity. If you're confused by some of the terminology here, capacity is a measure of the number of hours of normal use between charges and capacity reduces over time due to the chemical aging of the battery. This is totally normal and expected. Within iOS, charging from 0 to 100% or any combination of partial charges that adds up to 100% counts as one charge cycle. And each charge cycle degrades the battery by a small amount. As such, the battery cycle count is an important metric, and the lower this number, the slower the drop in capacity. The solution is to keep the charge between 20 and 80% whenever possible and enable the optimized battery charging feature for peace of mind. Myth number seven, shut down background apps to conserve your battery. Raise your hand if you thought that having too many background apps drained your battery faster. I certainly did. To start, there is some truth in this claim. You see, applications that are open in the background are constantly sending you notifications and updating content when connected to Wi-Fi or to a cellular network. But Apple has thought about this and gives us a setting to toggle called background app refresh, which you can find by going to settings and then general. By disabling this feature, background apps go into a suspended state and refresh content only when brought back to use. Now, you might think, why not just close the app instead? Well, here's the problem with that approach. Every time an app is shut down and reopened, a set of initialization and boot up files need to be uploaded to memory. If the app was instead left idling in the background, these initial files would still be there with no additional power required by the memory modules. The best analogy that I can think of to describe what's happening is that it's more efficient to drive your car at a constant speed to your destination rather than stopping and starting many times in between. So while closing down apps might seem like a battery saver, it actually uses more power to restart them later. The solution is to let iOS manage apps in the background and disable background app refresh for applications that you rarely use. So there you have it, some common myths about charging and battery life that should now be in your rear view mirror. With that said, I want to hear from you. What's the craziest battery myth you've ever believed? Or do you have a charging habit you're not sure about? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.